opening uh, CIA Green Business Center's uh, distinguished lecture series on energy efficiency. Uh, the idea of these lecture series were to bring in leading experts and thought leaders to share their uh, views and perspectives on energy efficiency, uh, to see how the energy efficiency in the country uh, is today and what are their thoughts and uh, perspectives in advancing it, uh, trying to advance uh, the energy efficiency discussions to a higher level. Uh, these lecture series started uh, uh, since the month of May 2020 and uh, as many of you might be aware, these lecture series are uh, happening on the first Monday of every month uh, at uh, 4 p.m. The idea was to uh, get, the part, uh, get the speaker, uh, share their views and perspectives and also take your questions and suggestions uh, or uh, take your uh, views uh, in response to their, uh, uh, their suggestions. Uh, it's an interactive session uh, which follows their initial address uh, for the first uh, 25 to 30 minutes. These sessions have been planned online uh, for a wider reach. So uh, we had an illustrious set of speakers join us in the past, uh, uh, past several lecture series. Uh, we had uh, participants from the International Energy Agency, from some of the leading technology suppliers, from uh, some of the uh, leading consultants, some of the policy makers, uh, organizations which have been making significant inroads on energy efficiency, uh, both from manufacturers, academics, and uh, uh, from various other stakeholders. And in this series, uh, we are very glad to have uh, in the 23rd lecture series, uh, 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 Mr. Milan Chitavar. Mr. Milan Chitavar is the Chief Executive Officer of CTEC Solutions. Uh, uh, Mr. Milan is a very popular uh, uh, personality in the energy efficiency space. Many of you might have interacted with him. Uh, during many other engagements and uh, uh, forums. Uh, Mr. Milan uh, brings in both the, uh, the shop floor perspective through his deep engagement with the industry at the shop floor, looking at energy efficiency interventions, as well as a much bigger picture perspective in terms of advancing the energy efficiency in the country through uh, the ESCO route, looking at financing opportunities, looking at various policy interventions that are re required in terms of advancing energy efficiency in the country. Somebody who has been very active in the ESCO space for uh, uh, several decades and uh, has been recognized with several honors, including the Special Recognition Award for Outstanding Efforts in Entrepreneurship and MSMEs, Energy Professional Award for the South Asia region, brings in uh, significant expertise in the areas of energy, renewable energy, and energy efficiency. Uh, uh, just for an introduction, Mr. Chitavar is an alumni of uh, uh, Vishwishraya National Institute of Technology and is currently pursuing a fellow program in management from IIM Indore. Uh, uh, Mr. Chitavar, over to you, sir, for your address, for your uh, thoughts, and uh, I request to all the participants, uh, any questions that you might have, feel free to post them in the chat window. We will certainly take that up uh, in the interactive session post Mr. Chitavar's uh, address to all of us. Over to you, uh, Mr. Milan Chitavar. Thank you so much. Thanks a lot, uh, dear Kiran, uh, for such a detailed uh, introduction. And hello, everyone. What I have planned is that I'll play a small video that tells us uh, what has been done, right? And But then uh, whatsoever has been done is so little that uh, the, all the other uh, time uh, I'm going to interact with you and share with you my thought process on uh, what will really help in the country as far as uh, energy efficiency deployment is concerned. So I'll, I'll play my uh, video. Global energy crisis have basically two issues. One is heavy consumption of fossil fuel and second is the global warming. The second is happening because of the first. And we need to address this very, very sophisticatedly, very, very precisely so that we can work out a sustainable way of living. Costs in all businesses are escalating, as, as you may know, and uh, particularly the cost of energy. And uh, each uh, business has uh, always, you know, endeavored to uh, see how margins can be enhanced. Uh, and one way of doing that uh, particularly is by reducing your costs. In our business of hotels, there are multiple costs, but energy is one very, very uh, basic and very, very high cost. In our energy audit in Taj Delhi, we found out that the laundry, the boiler and the chiller consume the highest amount of energy. 
So, uh, in, in air conditioning system, we carried out multiple projects to reduce its energy consumption by improving its performance. Uh, then, coming to hot water generation system, we did the fuel substitution project by uh, uh, changing the source of hot water generation. And in laundry, uh, laundry is a quite unique project wherein we have centralized the application of laundry and usage of laundry depending upon the type of machine and in uh, what time zone it is using. So far, we have been able to reduce their energy bills by 28%. CTEC's uniqueness is the way we care for our customers. It is not just only about energy auditing and finding out where energy efficiency measures can be implemented. It is not enough because everyone now needs assurance that their financials will be made strong after bonding with CTEC. And that is how we have been becoming their most loyal and trusted partners for energy efficiency. Even after the installation phase is over, our dedicated engineering team stays on the site and monitors the operations and maintenance of the site till the contract period is over. Oh yes, we are very, very happy. We are reaping the benefits as uh, promised, as assured by them. Uh, we are very happy with the way uh, they came and sat with us uh, in the initial days of this uh, due diligence to understand the scope of work, uh, to understand what all was needed to be done, uh, and also, most importantly, how the savings are going to be measured going ahead so that it would be uh, dealt with in a more transparent manner. In the field of energy conservation and environment protection, there has always been ample number of technologies. However, if you see their availability versus their implementation, the gap is very large. That's where CTEC found its application that it can deliver where what is needed and achieve the end results. Now our goal is to make all the commercial building energy efficient in the country. Energy crisis is a major global problem and that is exactly what we are trying to address with proven and tested methods with good ideas and better results. Yeah, so uh, back to the direct interaction. Am I audible? Uh, yes, sir, you are. Yeah, uh, so uh, hello everyone. Friends, I basically tried to uh, present what has happened so far, right? And it was a typical uh, case of uh, shared savings uh, energy performance contract, uh, which was uh, really delivered uh, quite, quite successfully at uh, several installations in last 10 years, right? Uh, we uh, literally uh, found out a solution to all the problems. I'll, I'll share one by one everything, right? But the but friends, basically, is is this the way to do it, right? So what we what we realize that that uh, fine uh, whatsoever has been done, but that's not the way uh, the future is going to be, right? So let me first of all uh, share um, how how uh, it has been, right? So. Uh, Am I am I uh, visible also? Because uh, your camera is off, sir. We can't see you. Oh, just one minute. Yeah, is it there? Yes, sir. Yeah, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, so, so uh, let, let me take uh, to the journey of how we uh, entered into it, how things started. Uh, so basically, uh, I mean, uh, I started uh, uh, way back in 1993 after passing out from National Property Council. That was the AMCAT program, and we were trained uh, for carrying out energy audits. So from 1993 to 2010, uh, it was all uh, the long journey, like any typical energy auditor. So we also did that, right? In one of the audit uh, assignment, uh, the customer said that uh, Milan, look uh, at my desk. Uh, here are three audit reports already there, right? Yours will be the fourth one, right? So I said, this is not uh, what we want, right? And he also said, this is not what they want, right? So then then the customer also asked a very interesting question. I mean, uh, you guys give us so many uh, recommendation. I mean, uh, you are any other energy auditor, right? Whether so much of savings really happen, right? I gave him a very honest answer. I don't know, right? <laughs> then, then he surprised and then he said, you don't know and you are recommending me. Then I told him, 
whether you have implemented uh, all the energy cost saving measures by any of the energy auditors, right? But tell me honestly, have you implemented all of them? Have you invested in all of them? So his answer was no. So that's why my answer was no, right? So this is this was this was uh, inquisitive uh, thought or inquisitive uh, point at which uh, uh, we we realized that that just being and doing auditing is 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 not sufficient and i have seen uh, since years and years uh, the the contribution from energy audits has has incrementally increased i am not saying that it has not increased or it has no role to play but whatsoever it is contributing is so little as compared to what is needed and today we are talking about net zero energy net zero carbon so the kind of interventions that is needed is is way too long than what is happening so we decided that fine uh, we will uh, invest and we will implement Thanks to uh, various initiatives in the country, uh, including CII on various kind of training programs. So um, I remember uh, ICICI has a very uh, a good uh, initiative to train the ESCOs. Right, we were taken uh, to US, uh, to Japan in the different programs to so be Bureau of Energy Efficiency initiatives, and we were taught like this is how energy performance contracting you can do it. I remember a, a, a China visit, right, which was there through USAID assistance, right. So as far as learning is concerned, uh, whatsoever ecosystem that was available in country, we were provided that. But we, very soon we realized that the large contracts, the way they are drafted in US, uh, they, that is not going to work in India. It has to be simple. It has to be straight. And then we also realized that uh, if the baseline uh, has to be the past uh, energy consumption and if you have to take on the past uh, energy bill, then uh, the consistency is, is something which really matters, which uh, was not there in the manufacturing sector. And uh, but, but if we uh, see the uh, energy consumption scenario in a typical commercial building, uh, which is operating three, uh, 65 days, 24 hours, like for example, hospitals or hotels, uh, we uh, will find that the uh, energy consumption was quite consistent. And also the commercial building uh, rates were much higher than the uh, manufacturing sector, right? In Maharashtra, it is almost like 20, 30% higher. So the payback period because of the um, tariff and also because of the operating hours uh, was, was much better. So we thought that that fine, uh, we might have worked a lot in the manufacturing sector, but then it is better to work in a commercial building as far as energy performance contracts are concerned. So we started doing that. Uh, we did that for a public sector. We did that for a large private sector uh, hotel uh, group. Um, and one by one, uh, we did it for almost like uh, 18 to 20 buildings, right, in last 10 years. And uh, we also decided that that we need to deliver a certain uh, number, like, for example, uh, in, in the overall energy bill, because it doesn't matter uh, to, to the uh, finance department whether you are saving in boiler or whether you are saving in chiller. To, to the technical team, it may matter, but but uh, uh, to, to the finance guys, it doesn't matter. They, they are going to see the overall monthly uh, energy bill amount, right? Whether that is getting reduced or not, right? So we said that, we decided that that at least let us work out for 20%, right? Now, where from this 20% comes up, uh, I, I have no clue, but, but we all were convinced and we talked with the customer also, let's attempt 20%, right? And let's attempt a, 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 a payback period of uh, somewhere around, uh, 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 one and a half year to two and a half year, right? In this range, let us work it out and let us form a energy performance contract in the period of uh, uh, three to five years so that the interest cost can be accommodated and so that a reasonable share of reduction in energy cost can come to the end user also uh, with, with positive cash flow. So that's how things were planned and things were implemented, right? Now, uh, with, with this much of work we implemented, right? And uh, I have been really lucky to get really great mentors, right? I remember uh, uh, Mr. Mathur, Dr. Mathur, when he visited us in 2008, and I told him that this is my desire to do energy performance contracting. He said, Milin, uh, you guys are great auditors, right? But that is only 33% of the skills that you have, right? The remaining, then I asked, what, what are the remaining 66%? Uh, so then he said, project management skills would be needed and, 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 and including finance, right? project management, including finance, right? He said that that don't go for finance uh, skills separately, but for project management, what is the financing skills? And the third one needed is the legal skill. I was very surprised at that point of time in 2008, right? But but today, today I mean, uh, uh, Dr. Martin, really visionary, right? Uh, his, his all the advices came through, absolutely, right? Uh, because what happens is uh, you invest in a premises, you invest for a customer, right? And then... Uh, uh, you can't say that the disputes won't happen. So you need to be uh, ready for that, right? Uh, I would like to share one very uh, important parameter. 
uh, that is ease of doing business. We all see that that almost from uh, uh, 140s kind of rank uh, to we have improved to 70s kind of rank, right? But there is one parameter which is needed for doing energy performance contracting, and I urge CII and all the uh, listeners, those who are listening to it, that unless and until um, enforcement uh, of contract, enforcement of contract is one of the very important parameter for energy performance contracting to happen. An enforcement of contract is something uh, we, wherein the legal system takes care of uh, uh, ensuring that the uh, right party gets its right deal, right? We, we as well as the industry is not expecting any favor, right? So, so on that rank, we are still uh, somewhere around 160s in a total number of countries of 190s, right? So if something goes wrong, if you go with, with, with the judicial uh, uh, system, and it is quite likely that, that when you are doing uh, projects on volume, then, then some of the other thing will go on this, right? So that kind of a system is not there. Anyway, so so uh, coming back to, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll first of all uh, share on the selection of uh, uh, energy conservation project, because what happens as an energy auditor, what you do is that that you evaluate every system and then you compare uh, uh, with with the uh, uh, sort of a benchmark kind of uh, energy efficiency levels in everything and then you come up with uh, different energy conservation measures and you also come up with a different kind of investment that is needed right but friends every rupee invested actually results you rupee saved right so you need to compare uh, on that scale right and then you have to figure it out, uh, like how do you really reach to 20% savings at a minimum cost of implementation, right? So in that situation, your LED project competes with a power factor project, power factor competes with a load factor project, load factor uh, project competes with a chiller project, right? So it's, it's basically, and that's how a financial guys think, right? So first time when when we did this kind of uh, evaluation, we realized that that yes, uh, what what is important? So that was a very, very interesting exercise we did uh, a good amount of mistakes i must admit that but that's how a learning process is right and then uh, another another differentiation with a typical energy audit approach was because in energy audit you basically compare with a single baseline right with a single baseline you find out energy saving uh, opportunity with that baseline you again find out another uh, saving opportunity but what practically happens is with every project implemented your baseline also changes right so that was also an interesting uh, experience right and then some of the uh, cumulative impact of uh, different energy conservation measures, if they are implemented simultaneously, then what is the overall impact, right? So in some of the cases, we found that the overall impact is improving. In some of the cases, we found that the overall impact is reducing. So uh, I have a, a component of researcher in my mind and uh, our company is fundamentally interested in lots of research as well, right? I, I recently completed my uh, FPM from IAM in dot which is a doctoral college contracting level to 25 companies, right? Hardly three companies have said that, that uh, help us in financing, right? Remaining all say that, that you have to deliver savings. That's what we will uh, hold you responsible for. We have money, we have money, right? Or we will get money, we, we have uh, our access to the lending institutions, which, which is quite a right statement, right? Another thing which I very humbly feel is that See, end of the day, energy conservation is a business like any other business, right? And like any other business, there are so many financing schemes which are available. The same should be available for uh, ESCOs also. What happens is we try to put our business as a separate uh, uh, type of business as if we are trying to do something different. And then we expect that there should be some separate lending schemes, right? So what happens is this keeps us on sideline track, right? And then you have to behave with those limited options only, right? Why? If at all, energy conservation makes a business sense. It has to be direct with the customer. It has to be uh, direct lending, right? And the future uh, is possible when, when the lending is uh, there for the end user, right? And of course, uh, the, the uh, lending would be needed, but it would be needed to the end user, wherein uh, the savings will be, uh, let's say, 30% uh, uh, or 25% higher than the uh, savings. So customers can also get uh, uh, net, co net positive cash flow, right? Now, what is needed is uh, we, we have to get away from uh, this mindset of uh, uh, part of the project funding, right? For example, all of us keep receiving several calls that that uh, you, you, you are entitled for, for a file like loan or your, your company is entitled for one crore loan, like, like this, we keep getting it, right? Then I ask them that, what is the collateral requirement? They say nothing. I mean, I'm not contacting anybody. I don't need that kind of a loan. Even then I receive that kind of thing, right? 
but but when we look for energy conservation uh, projects implemented uh, implementation as a financing option right for for as goes all those conventional ways of banking comes up why why i mean the credibility of any esco or credibility of any company is far far better than all these callers and and to all those whom these calls have been made right find the number which can be financed to a particular uh, balance sheet size can be limited right so that is the kind of openness that is needed right now what happens is uh, 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 the the banking option the financing option right if it is partial right certainly that is not budgeted right because industry is not aware of that kind of a saving potential exists in them right it's not that they don't have ability to invest right so what happens is things things go on the on the uh, back seat or things slow down right so what is needed is uh, 100% project finance uh, without collateral and bankers do have i mean every company has got great uh, uh, bankers with them or every great bank has got great companies with them right whom they will be willing to finance right there are many positive cash uh, rich companies who are not willing to take the finance right but whereas bankers will give them finance even at a rate of uh, 5 6 7 or 8% right so 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 the way that is needed is the uh, bankers need to uh, come up with with uh, and sustainability is going to be such a big thing right which includes energy efficiency right and without energy efficiency sustainability drive can not be achieved right so so sustainability will require so much of change to happen uh, on the shop floor right and for that financing is needed right so those banks who will lead this kind of financing option and take take it to your customers right with whom you are comfortable in lending right and take and and open up that kind of a thing to to esco like what is happening in middle east right that there is a central agency right which is which is building the opportunity right who is also financing and then expecting a guaranteed savings from uh, escos and that's how uh, things can be scaled up so so this this kind of a thought process is is very clear in our mind right and i am a firm believer whether whether uh, the ecosystem supports or not right we we have pursued earlier also we have pursued nothing was available from the ecosystem as far as the financing options are concerned and we will pursue it this way right and if it makes a business sense right it will be successful right and if it does not make a business sense then we will understand where are we going wrong and we will correct them we will correct them so this is what uh, uh, i have to say uh, in general right and uh, uh, just to put something on monitoring and verification side of it uh, and how do you really manage corona kind of a situation friends there is absolutely no way that in in your contract right even if you write it down this is there that is there but if a facility is closed closed down your customer will automatically ask you that when the facility was closed where is the energy saving where is the energy consumption right and then where is the energy saving so so the point is uh, uh the the outcome in form of really saved energy is what is the worry uh, for the investor investor i am saying the end user right and if you if you uh, as an esco or or as a energy saving agency right whatever you may call it as right if you can deliver that i i think uh, the job is done right so so that's what uh, i thought that that i will uh, share from my side and let's uh, put more time for the question answers right so that uh, we we can uh, try to uh, address those things uh, sure uh, thank you mr sitavar i think what you spoke uh, reflects the kind of deep engagement that you have been having with the industry your own personal experiences and also to see how uh, your journey has been over the last several years as an esco and uh, uh, i mean I'm talking about both the benefits and uh, the opportunities and challenges that uh, come out from a market like this Uh, there are quite quite a few questions from Mr. Stavar. I can go one by one and maybe uh, request your views and intervention on uh, on them. I think the first question was more uh, from your journey, uh, Mr. Stavar, asking about how is the industry's response or industries or buildings' response to ESCO projects today, and what is the change or transformation that you are seeing over the last few years, and within them are the responses better in large industries or with SMEs? very very uh, interesting question but but it's a very large question so let let me take one by one right see uh, as compared to the earlier days uh, the response in the industry whether it is manufacturing or whether it is commercial or whether it is other sector right the response has certainly increased right 
but at the same time uh, i mean uh, response uh, just for doing energy audit right uh, either there is too much of competition in that or uh, the customers right are not interested because the real reason is that for how many times they will really do that right uh, but for example if you say that that uh, look this is a technology right and and i have brought it for a demonstration purpose right and i will demonstrate you on your shop floor we will measure the consumption before and we will measure the consumption after right and it is a completely transparent in front of everyone right you see what happens right so no report right no no technology discussions no calculations right at the back of your mind you know that you what you are doing right it's not that that you are not doing that right and you implement that and and then when you demonstrate that then and, and then when customer sees the result right that really opens up everywhere particularly i have seen this kind of thought process in msme in corporate uh, culture there, there is a uh, quite a homework which is done and there is a annual uh, uh, agenda that this kind of projects will be taken up or that kind of a thing is budgeted so things happen bit systematically but in msme right things happen very abruptly right uh, because there is a single person who is willing to take the decisions right and is and, and the opportunities are much much higher in at, at msme level right and but the point is you have to be careful and then um, uh, you have to be i mean you don't get scale right uh, by by serving one msme right so your model should be like can can you can you serve the the cluster right that kind of approach or can you serve the multiple uh, options if you are doing one kind of project right and uh, this kind of approach right uh, work, works uh, uh, pretty well right honestly speaking uh, energy auditor's job is like a, a white collar job right but but um, uh, we we have completely turned out and converted to a blue collar job because that that is what is working these days thank you and any feedback on the reception from the building sir is that sector also open for such interventions now see it's opening up but frankly speaking um, uh, the the impact right as far as uh, hospitality industry is concerned right it, it has been uh, quite large quite large right so so industry is coming up uh, out of it right and surely uh, it will come up right but at the same time um, everybody will will be expecting end results all right sir uh, the second question was uh, on the uh, on the uh, statement or uh, point that you mentioned on money being available with the industry uh, in terms of investments and not needing to go to the banks for lending for some of the energy efficiency projects uh, the question was in terms of what would be the role of esco there i mean since the money is being put in by the client is the esco becoming is the esco becoming more a technical contributor only and if so uh, which sectors need that technical contribution more yeah see let me let me take the example of uh, medical fraternity right there is a patient uh, there is a doctor uh, there is a hospital and then there is a uh, um, medicine uh, shop right and and here i correlate uh, esco's job with a doctor right as a patient one goes to a doctor to to get right right to get rid of uh, the problem right so here the problem is higher energy cost right and escos as as a single agency right takes up the responsibility right see escos industry do not need see in whether whether financing option was not there for industry without escos right see banks are already there it's a it's a wrong uh, perception of overall industry including including us right that without providing energy uh, efficiency financing uh, the escos uh, uh, offers will not be accepted what is accepted out of esco today is deliver what you see right what we say is an energy audit report right as as an energy auditor which i am right i'm i'm not supposed to deliver anything beyond a report right okay but now industry says that that fine whether this much of savings will happen or not who is going to take the responsibility i'm not going to take the responsibility i have a job right okay and 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 then if the, if the if the results do not come based on based on your uh, recommendation right i'm i'm uh, taking a decision to invest right but where where is your role right so then then we said fine we we are esco right and and anything falling back right anything going wrong we will take the financial responsibility and we are there for it right and that that's how it's working it's working thank you um the the next question was uh, in terms of the role of technology suppliers as you are partners in implementation i'm sure you will be looking at several technology suppliers for their involvement in the implementation of several key esco projects be it in terms of chillers or vfds or lighting and so on how is the response from the technology suppliers towards esco mode of implementation are they uh, becoming your partners and second question as a follow up is 
Uh, what do you see as the role for IoT uh, in uh, measurement and verification of such technology-based proje projects? Do you see a larger role for IoT coming in in the MNV? Maybe two parts of the question, but uh, sure. you could answer both of them, sir. Sure, sure. Uh, see, uh, to answer the first uh, part, uh, see, all these technologies are coming from technology developers, right? Like, for example, again, I'll take the example of uh, I4 and I5 motors, right? See, motors are distributed by the dealers of the technology suppliers, right? And 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 uh, there are salespeople who are engaged uh, and involved there, right? Now, what happens is uh, if, if uh, there is a motor which is working in a plant, right? And then uh, if the dealer goes there or the uh, OEM uh, sales engineer goes there or an energy auditor goes there or an ESCO goes there, right? Now, the point is uh, ESCOs, uh, uh, theoretically, the knowledge of energy auditors or ESCOs would be similar. I would not rate ESCOs are any way better than that. But ESCOs have implemented so many projects that, that, that practical their practical understanding or practical knowledge is, is at a far uh, better level, right? So this is the ESCO out of these four guys would say that by replacing this motor by this motor, right, you are going to save uh, uh, 11%. Where from 11% comes? That, that is the knowledge of the ESCO, right? And if 11% doesn't come, then what happens? I'll take back the motor, I'll refund the money. That's it. Very simple, very straight, right? So these kind of thinking, but, but ESCOs can't manufacture motors, right? So a technology uh, developer or a manufacturer is the best at that, that, that the technology developer, right? And here, uh, my, my earnest uh, uh, request to all the energy efficient technology manufacturers is, though you all have the very good uh, distribution channel, right? But they are meant for your regular equipment, right? You will definitely find uh, ESCOs as a much better partners to sell out and they're going to buy it, right? Or they're, go they're going to help you in, in your sales to happen, right? So get engaged with them, right? It, we, we, are in, we are all in era of working together, right? All this fraternity is on one side, right? And the end customer is on another side, right? And we, that, that is the only way uh, results can be delivered. So as far as technology suppliers are concerned, we work very, very closely with uh, technology suppliers, right? In fact, uh, we, we first reach out to technology suppliers first and then to the customers. So it is to that extent we work with them, right? And uh, uh, the second question, sorry, I, I, I missed that. Uh, the role of IoT in the MNVs of technology. Oh, yeah, see, the, the, the point is MNV, the moment we say MNV, right? So if you are seeing uh, the uh, option C, right, uh, based on IPMVP methodology, wherein month on month you are comparing with the past year's month on month, right? There, these kind of things are useful, right? Or uh, these kind of uh, I IoT technologies are very useful in terms of control. Like, for example, you are having uh, air conditioning uh, in your lobby and you see that, uh, uh, that there is nobody who is sitting out there or the occupancy in the lobby is less, right? You can't uh, uh, reduce the air conditioning supply sitting out in the uh, uh, chiller room, right? Your IoT has to function there, right? Which will have a visual uh, feedback and based on that, it will reduce the RPM of the uh, AHU fan, right? So that kind of work can be done by IoT only, right? So answer to your question in terms of buildings, yes, very much possible, right? Uh, and particularly in case of buildings wherein uh, the customer is not coming uh, for, for paying into the building because if customer is paying into the building, customer would like all the controls to be with him, right? But let's say shopping malls, offices, right? Wherein, wherein uh, there, is, there is a large building and there are large energy bills, IoT can do really wonders. But as far as manufacturing facility is concerned, I have seen uh, IoT doing uh, good in form of uh, industry 4.0, but the benefits are far, far better uh, in other aspects like productivity, like information gathering, like controls, like automations, than uh, energy efficiency. Uh, as a follow-up- IoT, IoT is not improving fundamental efficiency of the equipment, right? It yes. is only improving control. So it has a role to play, but it has a role to play at a certain level, certain uh, level and certain location. Thank you. Uh, and in follow up on uh, your point on the technology and the benefits it can bring in, sir, uh, will the role of ESCO be more towards also looking at what are the factors for normalizing? For example, the variabilities in production, the variabilities in seasons in case of certain building uh, engagements, uh, manufacturing industries, there is a huge variation in production and therefore the energy consumption. How do you bring this normalization into account to prove the benefits? See, uh... Uh, for this, we use uh, uh, statistics, right? Uh, the, the whole community uses statistics, wherein uh, 
uh, you will normalize uh, uh, for uh, the baseline occupation or baseline occupancy or baseline uh, uh, kind of uh, production. But what happens is uh, uh, this is basically an estimation, right? This, this is not uh, the calculation. So there is a fundamental limitation, right? And exactly uh, if we come up or if we plan the M and V uh, to have all these kind of things, right? Uh, the accuracy improves, but these are the points of uh, uh, generating differences, right? Because what happens is uh, if these variations are very high because of, let's say, Corona kind of thing, right? If your occupancy is 80% in the baseline and now it is 85% or now it is 75%, then these methods all work, right? They work pretty well, right? But if it is a kind of a Corona kind of a situation wherein the everything goes down to the level of 20, 30% or nil, right? Then these methods do not work at all, right? So, so, uh, uh, despite having the, the qualification of CMVP or all, whatsoever is available in this world, we are of the opinion is that keep things simple, keep things simple, right? And uh, demonstrate the, the savings on the, on the shop floor during commissioning, right? And during, and, and see customer wants savings, right? The, the fundamental issue is if customer sees that, yes, uh, by, by when, when, when these guys are offering savings, they are implementing it and, and you can begin with a very small project, right? Not that the whole uh, holistic approach of 20% 20, 20 what we ourselves did it, right? Our approach is completely changed now, right? Whether as a demonstration or whether as a trial order or whether as a full-fledged order, right? Our job is to take care of that small area, right? Just do that. And and your speed of implementation is phenomenal, right? So, so and, and we are in the world of 2020, let, let me explain, right? We are, it's not the, the, the era of test man, right? I'm not saying that, that 2020 you just touch and go, right? It, 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 and you, 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 you build on that, right? So that, that's what we feel uh, that that is a good for us. And, and we, we, have, we have taken that decision. So our, our approach uh, earlier and our approach now is 100% is change. We, we are continuing with our past business model also, right? For, for some of our very specific customers, right? But, but that, that's, that's not the way we can work with all. Thank you. Uh, just a, a couple of questions on the market size and the opportunities, sir. Uh, several reports project the ESCO market to be a very, very huge number in India. I mean, Bureau of Energy Efficiency is one of the report or many other reports peg the energy efficiency market at a, a very huge number. I mean, 100 billion, 150 billion and many, much more uh, over the next five to 10 years. Uh, unfortunately, the kind of a few things are happening. One. When we look at China as a market for ESCO, it has suddenly picked up substantially well uh, for various reasons. And the model modes of implementation have also been different. The way the arbitration is happening has been different. Variety of uh, factors that facilitate such a quick update, uh, uptake. Number two, uh, do we have such large number of players in the country to cater to this kind of a huge market in India? And third, uh, what in your opinion needs to be done, sir, in terms of uh, accelerating both the energy efficiency space as well as the ESCO space, uh, the, the kind of investments that uh, uh, where the potential exists. We actually, very frankly speaking, I mean, uh, why did we did uh, uh, share savings uh, uh, energy business for 10 years, right? The answer is we were taught to do that, right? This is how uh, the energy uh, performance contracting has to be done, right? The whole world you move out, you find out what is to be done. So you, you learn, this is how you have to do it, right? And this is how everybody believes that you have to do it, right? I believe that there has been too much of teaching. There has been too much of history, right? The business is all about relationship between a buyer and a seller. That's it, right? How do we buy things, right? Okay. Uh, and and um, uh, Amazon and Flipkart and um, all, all these uh, new startups have changed everything, right? So my, my answer to the first point is that the cost of energy, right, if you take uh, in, in total uh, life cycle costing, right, is very high. Like, for example, investment made uh, in, in this uh, I-4 and I-5 motors, right, is going to give returns more, uh, by, by four to six times, right? So how does the financial things, right, if, if I have to go, right, to an MSME unit and if I have to say, say uh, and convince him on uh, I-4 and I-5 motors, the moment I say I-4 or I-5, he doesn't understand that. The moment I say give him energy perform energy uh saving calculation he doesn't understand it the way i open up a motor right and and defines him that look the copper has gone up look the efficiency has gone up because of abcd reasons he doesn't understand right so the fault is with him or me right the fault is with me right i'm not using the right language right the point is right i mean there is a saying in hindi right so what you do is that you simply measure the power consumption in his motor right and you say that 
let's put this motor right and let's see the power consumption this is the power consumption so this is the saving now you ask him to do all the calculation he will do much faster than you right and 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 then he will say this much is the saving how much is the cost this much is the cost. okay okay so i'm going to get paid back in 1.5 years right okay and then uh, then after that jo paisa bach raha hai wo mera hai bole ha aapka hi so the point is uh, we we guys have too much of history right and whereas we need to make this business like any other business right and and the benefit that you are offering is is pretty clear it is the reduction in energy cost that is what you are selling not this technology or that technology so uh, coming to the third part the potential is pretty high right for example if you are going to save your money right by doing xyz thing you will do that i will do that right so same way the response is there but you have to deliver that you have to deliver that that is so the level of competence that is needed to implement any technology believe me despite uh, uh, having worked for so many years right so many times we we feel uh, that that uh, it is getting limited on that front right so but but if you are delivering it that there is a huge market there is a huge market and number of players are still very very less right and um, even for that sake right when i say that that we have been uh, bureau of energy efficiency accredited esco customer doesn't understand what does it mean right whereas we have been putting our whole industry has been putting our all the efforts on the getting these kind of qualification believe me i mean everybody has sweated a lot to get these kind of qualifications but the market does not understand it so let us do what market understands and let us simply deliver that thank you uh, uh, there is also a question on uh, i mean right now uh, there is a huge amount of focus on renewables and is that creating some kind of a rebound effect is the focus on energy efficiency getting shifted to uh, renewables and if the if the uh, energy is coming from renewables is the uh, is the attention on energy efficiency coming down or will will it be coming down in future any thoughts on that actually very frankly speaking uh, the the focus on renewable has picked up much much faster right because when uh, the era of windmills was there the windmill was happening in another campus and energy efficiency was happening in another campus right so that was also sort of renewable right but the, but that hasn't impacted the energy efficiency at all but when it comes to solar right uh, we see that that so many companies have invested in solar and and of a sizable amount they're full of their um, rooftop area is invested for solar right and and see if somebody is investing in solar the minimum payback period is 4 years right the minimum i am talking about the maharashtra which is having the highest of the uh, electricity tariff it is 4 years right whereas energy efficiency we are talking about 2 years payback right now what happens is energy efficiency can give you maximum uh, 20 25% savings in in uh, some of the areas right but whereas solar will give you that kind of result in all the areas right so the point uh, i have i have been talking to so many people people uh, so many decision makers also on these fronts right they say that that fine uh, what you are saying is right but but for us to appreciate what you are saying is too difficult we don't understand energy efficiency but when we have to invest in solar we know for sure that this is the investment and this is the return right but solar also cannot do all right even uh, there are plenty of uh, um, uh, buildings or even the um, storage uh, uh, kind of facilities right who has a huge uh, uh, area on roof they have attempted to go for net zero right and they have been able to get up to 80 85% 90% right and they are facing huge problem in terms of now there is no roof area left or there is no contract demand left in the in the electricity connection that i can go for solar so so the fundamental importance of energy efficiency still exists right but yes uh, uh, i must admit that uh, uh, solar uh, has um, uh impacted much faster and solar has gone much faster right but but solar is also uh, cannot uh, be the player who, who will be able to uh, score uh, uh, 100% of the opportunity right so so the importance of energy efficiency is, is still there thank you uh, to all the participants i've got two more questions uh, to the speaker and if you have anything left or any other questions to be asked please do post it in the chat window uh, sir one question is on um, uh the the startups uh, we see a large number of startups now uh, interested in energy and energy efficiency areas uh, several innovative uh, interventions and technologies have come in uh, i mean and and the the demand from the customer has always been in terms of uh, a shared savings model i mean while the technology is from the startup the uh, the host company is not willing to uh, make the investment up front uh, they have been insisting on a shared savings model and therefore many of the startups are uh, uh, i would say 
looking at esco as an opportunity uh, as a, as a model for getting their technologies or products uh, installed now do you think is that a right option sir or uh, i mean uh, the startups have many other things to handle apart from their own technology development uh, and so on uh, what is your opinion or uh, what is your uh, advice for startups who are trying to uh, enter industry through a shared savings model uh, see fundamentally uh, these uh, are iot based models right which which are coming up from the startups right luckily the capital cost is not too high i'm not saying the development cost the development cost uh, is is quite uh, large but once you have developed it then whatsoever you are deploying it right at a particular facility that is much lesser right so um, th th there is a way uh, i mean uh, these kind of products or this kind of startups can afford a shared savings model right because they, but but to them also my advice would be that um, uh, don't go for quantification of savings right you install that right and then you demonstrate the savings right in in a in a limited area and you say that that so much of savings are there and do you agree that so much of savings are there right so what happens is uh, for example if you offer a, a, a good good dish in your restaurant right and customer has tested it customer will come again and again for sure right so now what happens is uh, the customer has seen that and customer will go for buying it right because you have demonstrated it in his premises right now you say that that this much is the saving right so this much is my rental right so now what happens is you are completely off from the uh, month on month saving calculation basis right because corona kind of things happen there is no way doesn't matter what not uh, you get a nobel award model to quantify the savings it's not going to work out let let me tell very very frankly right so make business model simpler simpler right and because customer has seen that customer will agree that yes this much is the is the is the saving right in fact i would i would name it uh, esl was the first one to talk about the savings terminology right and it is really phenomenal right because end of the day how many things escos will do this also that also that also that also it's not possible for them to do it right and if your product is good if your technology is good if it is delivering end results at the customer's end why will customer not buy it from you customer will buy thank you sir and the last question has been on the Uh, financing of energy efficiency projects and the and the loan appraisal process uh, the the traditional way of loan appraisal process and the energy efficiency kind of returns in the cash flows uh, is not actually making many of the projects uh, uh, significantly attractive while a large amount of work has happened in terms of training bankers training financial institutions on energy efficiency financing uh, I, i mean the question is how in your opinion um, or what in your opinion should be done to mainstream this more because while while the person getting trained is at a corporate level the appraisal happens at the branch level through the loan appraiser where the the number of appraisal steps or processes are similar for uh, a working capital or a project financing or energy efficiency financing uh, model so any thoughts on the financing of energy efficiency sure 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 actually uh, accidentally we solved this problem Uh, it's not that that uh, we we had some great strategy to solve this. See fundamentally, and and, uh, fundam and I will tell this point very very clearly. See, don't go to your nearest bank or don't go to your bank to for financing of it, right? Because this is your assumption that your bank will finance this, right? Your bank or anybody's bank or any bank has has so many customers to finance, right? So so in our case, what happened was the the bank which financed us our our project, right, has rejected our project twice. right in our city in our city of nagpur our lending was rejected twice and i was completely disappointed but luckily i was connected with the ecosystem so i discussed this thing very openly in in uh, delhi right uh, with with the senior officials of those banks so then we, which branch you go you go right did you go and i told that i am nagpur so i went to this right i'll not name the bank that's not correct right so no 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 you go to this branch Right. I said, why the bank rules are same? They don't change by the branch, right? But let me tell you, all friends, they do change by the branch, right? They do change by the branch because it is finally the branch manager or your appraisal committee, right? So go with the bank. And now there are plenty of banks who has financed earlier energy saving projects. So if your bank has not financed energy saving project, don't go to them, right? Why you are going to be the first guy, right? Because the moment you say this, everything is 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 uh, going different different way, right? and in our case what happened was uh, there was some energy efficiency schemes right and but then we said that no 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 we, we are a msme right you finance under msme scheme right because understanding of msme schemes is is pretty large in different different branches right 
so so i said that that you finance in this under this scheme and you have to you have to have a very good understanding of all the uh, branches right i even asked once that to to a bank when when i took my first loan that that you give loan to a ca or you give loan to me well, no 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 we give loan to the company we don't give but then then why ca is required no 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 ca ca is report is important right so i said that they are these are the projections right which i am going to deliver right not ca is going to deliver Right, but then, then, then I said that that fine. We are all energy auditors. We have been making projections, so let us prepare ourselves. Right, seven to eight times my the, the, the different faults were found in my report. But but with every fault, my competence was going up and up and up. And and I I did that. I did that. And and our every case, right? Not even a single case we have got any loan through our CA. Right. And you contact NBFCs. NBFCs are more flexible. They will ask you for one to one point five percent higher interest rate. But believe me, friends, you can accommodate that. You can accommodate that that in in your uh, financing, right? But if you are a manufacturer of that particular product and then you are financing it, then I would suggest go for shared savings model, right? Like more what happens in IoT case uh, kind of deployment. But if you are buying it and if you are selling it, right, it, it is a riskier game. I'll, I'll not say that you don't do it, but but it is a very very risky game. Mr. Chitawar, thank you so much. I think your session has been. Uh, very interesting, both your address as well as uh, your response to some of the questions uh, that had come from the participants. Thank you so much for joining today and sharing your thoughts. I think I leave the last word to you, sir, a minute to uh, share your concluding thoughts, and then we could close the session for today. Yeah. Uh, first of all, uh, thanks a lot, Kiran, for moderating it so nicely. Right. Uh, my my last uh, uh, line or last points will be this: that the opportunities are now. Right. It's not that the opportunities have started earlier. Right. Uh, the zero net zero load, right, and the the load, the pressure to reduce the energy cost, and the number of technologies that are available for deployment are pretty pretty large. And things 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 will go on on a faster mode. The world is moving much faster, right? Whether acceptance or rejection, right? So uh, things uh, in in waiting mode, uh, that kind of a life is is now not there, right? So I wish all the best uh, to the fraternity, right? Uh, be positive, right? That there is a lot to do. Deliver end result, and customer will be behind. This is what uh, will be the last words of mine. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Mr. Chitawar, for your address. And thank you to all the participants who have joined us in this session. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. Thank you.